what's the value of health? That's a key question in our life. Why? Because, first of all, we know, and that's for sure, that health is very important. If we are more healthy, then we can function better, we can enjoy life more, we can be more likely to be happy. It's a, it's a huge determinant of happiness. So it's clear that this is a very important thing in our life, our, our, our health. And even, or I would say also, our policymakers understand that health is, health is really important. If we look at the Lisbon Treaty, the Lisbon Treaty, you know, from the European Union, there is an article, Article 168, I'm assuming that not many know that article by heart, so I will show it. And what do they say? They say, a high level of human health protection shall be ensured in all European policies and initiatives. So it means that whatever we do in the European Union should take into account the impact on our health. So that's clear. Health is really important. But that was not, of course, my question. My question was, what's the value of health? So that means, how much money do we want to spend on our health. We cannot spend all the money of the world on our health. How much money do we want to spend on our health? That's a crucial question. Of course, yeah, um, you can say, what do you mean by health? Yeah, let's look at the definition of the World Health Organization. They say health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. It's a kind of state of perfec perfection. That's what we want to achieve. And then the question is again, how much do we want to pay? What is our willingness to pay to achieve that level? And guess what? We can do that. We can measure the willingness to pay of people to have better health. And I cite one study. There are many studies. One of them was by a French group um, from Lyon, and they interviewed 1,500 European citizens with a very simple question. If we can reduce your health risks, so environment, other risks that, that affect your health, if we can reduce those risks, which helps us to gain you one year of health, of perfect health, how much would you be willing to pay to have that risk reduction in order to gain more health? You can imagine that some people say, nothing at all, I don't want to stay one year longer in this uh, valley of tears, and others that want to pay really a lot. So it's, it's of course very variable. But the average was, guess what, it was 40,000 euros. That was the result of that study. The average value that we assign to one year in good health equals 40,000 euros. And with a lot of variability, as I just said. Okay, so that's the story. That's the end. We know now what is the value of health. 40,000 euros for one healthy life year. Of course, that's not yet the story. There is something else. We also care about the health of others. And that can be for many reasons. Why do we care about the health of others? Some of us simply for egoistic reasons. I want my neighbor to be well treated because if he's not well treated, he gets an infection and then he can infect me and I don't want that to happen. So I'm, I care about his health just for egoistic reasons. The second reason is paternalistic. I want to care about the health of others just because I like to care about the health of others and I like to be in charge and, and play the boss. You should lose weight. Well, don't take it personal, but uh, so <laughs> you, you should stop smoking. That is paternalistic. And then there's a third reason, that is altruistic. We care about the health of others simply because we feel compassion with others, we empathize with others, and luckily still many people in our country and in our world are altruistic and have this motivation to care about the health of others. Now, that also explains why we have healthcare systems, why we have a national health service. We contribute all to that national health service, and those who earn more, they contribute more. And those who earn less, they contribute less. We have um, social health insurance systems also in some countries, and that is explained by the fact that we care for the health of others. But we have to admit, some are against that. Some don't want that kind of uh, solidarity. In some countries, we don't see that kind of systems. So there is still a problem. There is, in my view, not enough people that are altruistic. And that is a danger for our health, for our society. And I call it as follows. The problem with humankind is that there are not enough kind humans. And we have to take that seriously. Of course, this is not the topic of my, my talk. What do we do with those not kind humans? Should we kill them? No, that's not kind. So that's, <laughs> that's a little bit too, too difficult for me. So let's continue on, on health, okay? So I have two more reasons for those of you who are not altruistic. 
The first reason is coming from Mackenbach from Rotterdam. They found out that if we can close the health gap, so the inequalities in health be between those who have poor health and those who have good health, and mostly that's also related to poor income and high income, if we can close that gap, we could save 20% of our healthcare expenditure because we would have more health people, less sick people, less hospitalizations, and so on. There is no other policy measure that can save 20% of our healthcare expenditures. And there's a second argument, and that comes from Oxford. The guys from Oxford, they did a study, and they looked at all European countries, and they looked at those who invest more in health in a public system, and they found that every euro that we invest in health will return two euros back to society in the long run. You have to take about 15 years for that. It's not happening immediately. But if you invest more in health, it will return more money, twice as much as money, uh, money to the society. There's only one sector doing better than the healthcare sector, and that's education. There, the, the factor is three, even. Okay, so. I hope that I convinced most of you that we need to invest in health and to invest in health for all. But that brings us to the next question. If a new treatment comes, a fantastic new treatment for cancer, a fantastic new technology for chronic heart failure, and that, that costs money, what should we do with that new treatment? Should we accept it or not? Well, we have to find out the balance. And I give one example. Imagine a new treatment for Parkinson, for cancer, for heart failure, and the cost of that treatment is 60,000 euros. That's huge, that's expensive. But imagine that we can win two healthy life years in those patients. So because of the new treatment, they will live longer and also more happily and more healthily, and that's what we gain, two healthy life years. So that means the ratio is 30,000 euro to gain one healthy life year. And I say this is good. Why do I say this is good? Well, five minutes ago, I explained that people want to assign a value of 40,000 euros for one healthy life here. And here, this treatment costs only 30,000 euros to gain one healthy life here. It's as if you are going to buy a car, the value of the car is 40,000, but we only have to pay 30,000. That's a good deal. Well, this new treatment here is a good deal, because it's only 30,000 euros to gain one healthy life here. Now, it's not the end of the story, of course, because there are some other elements that play here. Uh, first of all, it has been shown that if you take into account that altruism, that we can increase that value of health by at least 25%. We are not willing to pay as much money for somebody else's health than for our own health, unfortunately, but yet we show some altruism on average, and on average that's an additional 25% to the value of health. So it becomes 50,000 euros now. But then there are two other elements. The first one is medical need. And that comes from the theory from Skitovsky. What does Skitovsky say? He says, look, yes, of course, health is a value. But there is something that we could call an acceptable level of health, which we ideally should all achieve as long as possible. Ideally, we should have that acceptable level of health for 100 years, and then we die silently on a bench in the park. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the dream, OK? From Skitovsky, yeah, not from, from... Okay, so that means that if you have people who are way below that acceptable level, we should do more for them because they're suffering more. And it also means that people that are already above that acceptable level, maybe we should not pay for their health. They should pay for it themselves. Two examples, somebody is really suffering a lot and need, need blood transfusions and so on. He's very sick. So there, the value of one health year is higher than this 50,000. We can go with some diseases, we see that we go up to 100,000, 200,000 euros to gain one healthy life year. A typical example are these orphan drugs for rare diseases. They are very expensive, but we gain life years and we are willing to pay as a society quite a lot of money. And that's logic because there is a huge medical need in that population. And somebody who has a, a little fungal infection of the, of the nails, sorry, you're already at good, good health, so why should we pay extra to get perfection? And that's wrong with the definition of the WHO. They say it's a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. And I would like to suggest to change that, to say health is a state of acceptable physical, mental and social well-being. We have to avoid that we, we go for the perfection and because we waste a lot of money by trying to go for the perfection. And that's why we call it medicalizing. So, medicalizing. so we, we try to make everything a problem and try to get a treatment for it. And that's not good. There's a second problem, that is budget impact. Imagine a fantastic treatment, and it has good value for money. 
but 20% of our population is suffering from that disease, then unfortunately and correctly, the decision maker, the payer will say, sorry guys, but if we pay as from tomorrow for that new treatment, it will affect our healthcare budget too much, we cannot afford it. And Birch and Gaffney make the comparison with cornflakes. They say, imagine you go to the supermarket to buy cornflakes and you select the cornflakes with the best value for money. However you find that out, that's your problem. But imagine that they say, you have to buy that one by at least five kilograms, then you will not buy it. Because your budget for the, leak, for the weekend is limited, and if you buy five kilograms of cornflakes, there is not money left to do other things this weekend. So, it's not only about good value for money, it's also about medical need, and it's also about the impact on our budget. And based on these three criteria, our policymakers should make clear what is our societal willingness to pay for extra health. It's not all the money of the world. There are limits, but these limits are affected by medical need and by the budget impact. The problem today is policymakers don't want to talk about that, because it's a little bit weird to talk about the value of health, but we have to be explicit about it. I end with two final comments. First of all, waste. We waste a lot of money in the healthcare system. We take too many drugs, we get too many investigations, uh, imaging techniques, unnecessary surgery. All that money that is wasted, that's not only wasted money, it's also wasted lives. So wasted money equals wasted lives, because that money cannot anymore be used to treat people who really need it with fantastic new innovations. So that's really a message to all of us. Let's avoid that waste in our healthcare. Second and final point is, why are we making unhealthy choices? We just said, oh yes, health is very important. We all find health very important, and yet we make unhealthy choices. We drink too much, now and then a drink is okay, but we drink too much. We smoke, many of us smoke, sugar, uh, fat and so on. Why is this? Well, because we are sick. We are making unhealthy choices because we are sick. We are namely addicted. We got sooner or later addicted to all those things. Even to sugar and to fat you can get addicted. And that's of course a problem. So, I would like to conclude with some recommendations for all and for our governments. First of all, our governments, I want to convince them, please invest in health for all. It's good not only for those people, but also for the economy. Secondly, make explicit to the innovative industry what are our societal limits. We need innovation, but it cannot cost the end of the world. So we need to communicate better to the innovative industry. Dear industry, this is the amount of money that we want to pay for one additional year in good health that you can offer to our population. We have to fight against waste. All that money that is wasted, that, that's terrible. We have to take care of our health. It's easier to say than to do. And we should also take care of the health of others as if, if it was our own health. Because it helps in the end also our society to be a better society. I start sounding like a preacher now, sorry. <laughs> and finally, we have to fight against that industry of addiction. And we have to start today. And we can use also technology, by the way, to help us there to, to fight against that uh, industry of addiction. So my final comment is the value of health is what, is what we make of it together. Thank you very much.